In this video, we're going to be creating a spreadsheet model to compare reinvesting dividends to a constant dollar investment in the S&P 500 ETF. So to start off, what I did was download the past nine years worth of monthly trading data for the S&P 500 ETF. And we have the first trade of the month and then the last trade of the month. Next, I downloaded historical data for the dividends on the same period. And in order to build our model, the first thing we're going to have to do is somehow compare that dividend or add that dividend into this table where appropriate. Now you can see that the dates here don't match. Okay, so what I'm going to do is add a column here. And I'm going to convert this into just a month and year. All right, I'm going to use the text function to do that. And we're going to go ahead and look at the date. And then we're going to return a two digit month and a two digit year. So we just copy that down quickly. And uh, then I'm going to name this whole range. So it'll be easy to use in formulas. And I'll just call it dividends. Okay, with that done, what we'll do is come over here and create a formula to go ahead and populate this when there is a dividend. So I'm going to use VLOOKUP. And again, we're going to have to use that text function to convert the date into a month and year. And we're going to go look for that month and year in the dividends table. And if we find it, we're going to return what's in the second column. And I'm going to make this an exact match. Okay, so we can see that there isn't one for the first month. Let's see what happens if I copy it down. In the second month, it seems to work. And then as I go along here, uh, we see that, oh, those dividends are paid quarterly. And then I, I don't really want to have these NAs display when there is no dividend. So what I'm going to do is wrap that whole formula in if error. Okay, so the first thing it'll do is try to calculate that formula. And when it can't, we'll just put an empty string there. Give you a quick look at that formula in its entirety. And then we'll go ahead and copy this down. So now we've done uh, all the sort of bookkeeping for when there is a dividend. And now we're going to go ahead and figure out how much of the S&P 500 ETF we can buy with $1,000. And so we're going to buy at the beginning of the month here. And I will take my initial investment and I'll divide it by the price at the beginning of the month. And so I end up with a fractional amount of shares, but 7.64. All right. Next thing we're going to do is see if there's a dividend that we can reinvest. So I'm going to do that with an and I'm going to combine it again with that is error. And we're going to see if there's division by zero. When there's division by zero, there will not be any reinvestment. So the easiest way to do that is to just go ahead and uh, divide whatever's in the dividend column by the ending price. OK, so if there's no dividend, then uh, we'll just put a blank there. And if there is a dividend, what we're going to do is take it, whatever's in E12 there, and multiply it by the number of shares we have. So that's how much dividend we earned. And then we're going to divide it by, in this case, the share price at the end of the month. And that'll give me the number of shares that I can reinvest. Now, it's not exact here. OK, we get the dividend sometime in the middle of the month when it's paid. And then I'm using the ending price to calculate how many shares I'm reinvesting. So it is an estimate, OK, but it should be a random difference here. And so sometimes it'll look like I bought a, a little bit too much shares. Sometimes it'll look like I didn't buy enough. All right, but it won't be exact. I could get a lot closer if I went ahead and downloaded the daily data and then got that ending price on, say, the 15th or 16th. All right, but again, it's, it's going to be an estimate because sometimes that dividend gets paid on the 15th, sometimes it gets paid on the 16th, and uh, it may not get credited to your account immediately. So you may be looking at buying shares a day or so later, even after the dividend is paid. All right, so this should provide a reasonable estimate. Okay, so we have our reinvestment. And then uh, we're going to calculate the ending value under reinvestment. And it's going to be the sum of whatever's 
in the reinvestment column plus our starting all right we'll multiply that by the month end price okay for the constant dollar investment what we're going to do is absolute reference that shares beginning and multiply that by the ending price all right so in the first month there's no difference because we didn't get any uh, dividends to reinvest okay so then we're left with what do we do in row two in row two the shares beginning is going to equal the sum of our beginning shares plus the reinvested shares all right and of course in month two there there is no difference all right with this formula i should be able to just copy it down and i see that okay i got about four percent of a share okay and then i should be able to just copy this one down all right so we have 869 we lost some money there and then here since we don't have as many shares uh, it looks like uh, we have a slightly bigger loss okay with all that done we should be able to just copy this down and complete our table okay so we can see that we have a, a big difference here and i'm going to go up to the top of the model here and get some summary statistics on this okay so our ending balance when we reinvest is whatever's in cell h120 and uh, when we don't reinvest it's i120 okay so we can see we have about 20 percent more in absolute dollar return when we reinvest dividends okay we can calculate a cumulative return and that's just going to be whatever's the ending balance divided by the start okay and if we want just the gain on that we can subtract one all right so in absolute terms we have almost three times as much money uh, the gain on that is almost two times our initial investment okay and so we see that when we use the constant dollar uh, our total gain is a little bit less than one and a half times our initial investment all right we'll compute the annualized return here and so to do that i'll just see how many months i have all right and then i'll divide that by 12. okay so exactly nine years and then to get our annualized rate of return we're going to take our ending balance divide it by our beginning and then we're going to raise it to one over however many years we invested okay again we're going to have to subtract one from that all right so our annual rate of return then reinvesting dividends is just about 12 and a half percent and let's compare it to the constant dollar annualized return okay so constant dollar wise over this nine year period uh, we have gained on average 10.2 or about 10 and a quarter percent all right so what do i do with those numbers essentially what i'm saying is that if i take my starting value and I multiply it by one plus that rate of return and then raise it to the number of years I can get my ending balance okay so what do I do with all this well the thing is that a lot of models when you are estimating what your future value is going to be even if you're uh, trying to evaluate some trading system it ignores the reinvestment of dividends all right so we can see that when you do that it will greatly underestimate uh, the ending balance that you could have should you reinvest dividends another thing you you want to look at is when people are claiming some return you want to see are you talking about reinvesting dividends which is called a total return or are you just talking about this constant dollar investment okay so hopefully that helps you to see the difference between reinvesting dividends and constant dollar investing